Hello and welcome back to another update. It is your host Weep Union, and in this one we'll be covering the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. Starting out in the south, the Russians have advanced here west of Novokrovka. It is a small advance by the 45 positions the Russians have available in the area, slightly improving their positions in the direction of Bilohirya and Melatokmashka. Ahead of the Ukrainian offensive in the summer of last year, the Russians attempted some positional finding in the direction of Melatokmashka, and this is likely a continuation of such operations. The fighting will take place here by Mirne towards Sherifne, here by Lohivsky and Novokrovka in the direction of Bilohirye and Melatokmashka in the east part of Orihiv. Moving on to the next section of the front line, we see here in the direction of Reorivka, the Russians have been able to push towards Maximilianivka and gain a foothold. This was previously reported, and then the Ukrainians managed to push them out. The Russians have now re-entered, regaining these positions and having a foothold within the town of Maximilianivka. This allows Russians to pressure the Ukrainians here in the southern part of the Krasnodivka front. And as I mentioned in my analysis yesterday, the Russians have been working to improve the southern and western flank of Krasnodivka. And with this, we see that the Russians have actually managed to capture the outskirts here in the southwest and pushed along the railway to improve the buffer zone they have in between Krasnodivka and the Ukrainian positions west of the city. This is a combined strike by the Russians in the western direction of the city and by Maximilianivka in an attempt to gain control over everything to the in between the two areas and to strengthen the positions in the area, preventing Ukrainian forces from counterattacking towards the southern part of the city. That would allow the Russians to push through the northern parts of Krasnoyarivka, where positional fighting continues. Further north in the direction of Nitailova, the Russians have advanced slightly in the direction of Yasnoprodivka, north of the village of Nitailova. This has allowed them to push along the forest lines southwest of Yasnoprodivka, inching closer towards the village as the Russians have advanced both to the north, east and south of the village of Yasnoprodivka. Further north, here north of Vomansk, the Russians have advanced further towards Novoslivka, Persia. They have managed to reach the outskirts from the east. However, the south still have a few Ukrainian fortified positions ahead of the town. The Russians are looking to attack Novoslivka, Persia, not just from the south and east, but also from the north, from the Sokil direction, capturing that village and pushing down south. And at the same time, they are pushing in a western direction towards Eskushne and the north of Yasnoprodivka to pressure the village from the north and to attack the Ukrainian positions along the Vovcha river line. In the direction of Novoalexandrivka, the Russians have advanced in the northern part, attacking from the northern flank, which has allowed them to capture the majority of the town, leaving only small parts in the grey zone. The Ukrainian fortified positions to the southwest and west of the town are also in the grey zone. This means that the entirety of Novoalexandrivka is contested or under Russian control, even the fortified positions outside of the town. The next line of defense of the Ukrainians is by Wostyevshevka, and after that there is no fortified positions of the Ukrainians between Pokrovsk and Konstantinivka. We see here in the direction of Wostyevshevka that the Russians would be able to push through, gain control over the village, and then face off against the final fortified positions of the Ukrainians connected to the road itself. Then the Russians would likely work similarly to Ocheretene to advance in multiple directions, expand their zone of control over the area, gain control over all of the fortified positions to strengthen the northern and southern flank. We see that to the east of the highway, the Ukrainian positions are located along a river line where multiple villages are connected to, and to the south, between Losovatske here to the southwest of Novoalexandrivka, and all the way to the highway and the villages and towns connected to the highway, there is a southern river line as well. This means that the Russians pushing through Novoalexandrivka will have to face off against Vostovishane. After that, the Russians will be advancing in the northern direction towards the western bank of the river line and in the southern direction to capture the northern bank of the river line, which will allow for a strong flank both to the south and to the east, expanding their zone of control and using this position as a natural barrier to gain control over this highway and completely cut it off. This will allow the Russians to push towards Pokrovsk from the east and towards Konstantinivka from the west. This is a very significant situation that the Russians are attempting to 
significantly improve and develop offensive operations from if the Russians gain control over positions here by the highway and expand their zone of control to have a southern and eastern flank that are powerful, the Russians will be able to develop a significant offensive operation towards Kostantinivka and Pokrovsk from this area, and this would be the main area of fighting in the entirety of the war in Ukraine, as the Russians would use this position to push through the Ukrainian fortified positions, as they will be able to flank the majority of the Ukrainian fortified positions. As we see, they are mainly focused around the northern, eastern, and southern parts of Kostantinivka. By pushing along the highway, they will be able to avoid the majority of these fortified positions, and a major offensive can be developed from that direction. What this means is that the entirety defense of the Donetsk region of the Ukrainians rests on two current locations. That is this highway between Pokrovsk and Konstantinivka, as the Russians are trying to push through to gain control of it, and Chesevyar, where heavy fighting is continuing as well. Talking about Chesevyar, the Russians have advanced to the northwest of Ohdenivka, capturing the forest patch and contesting the fortified positions and trenches the Ukrainians have in the area. Gaining control over these fortified positions will allow the Russians to gain control over the rest of Kalinia and start offensive operations across the canal line and towards Rihorivka. The Russians will attempt to gain control of the town, which will significantly expand the Russian control over the eastern bank of the canal line. And at the same time, we see heavy fighting continues in the Chesevya micro district in the western part of it and in the first patch between Kalinia and the micro district where the Ukrainians continuously send troops across the canal to hold the line as much as possible. The Russians are here attempting to close it completely, closing that and advancing further north to also include Hurorivka will significantly expand the area in which the Russians can cross over the canal and this will allow the Russians to flank the city from the south and from the north. The incursion the Russians had across the canal line was not stable enough, it's simply deep reconnaissance groups and therefore the Russians do not have a foothold properly yet. This is only contested in the forest patch across the canal line, so the map was corrected there. But we see that heavy fighting takes place both in the northern and southern flank where the Russians have had incursions across the canal line but does not yet have a proper foothold. While fighting continues in the Chesovia micro district, north of Bohdanivka and in the direction of Ryorivka. The Russian offensive currently is very intense and it is including the entire section of the front line, and this also includes the Siversk front, where the Russians have advanced further to the northeast of Rostolivka, aligning the front line almost completely along the road north of the village. With this, the Russians are getting closer to flanking the village itself from the north, gaining control over the northern bank of the Sucha Plotva river, and gaining control over the Ukrainian fortified positions in the area. At the same time, in the direction of the east of Siversk, the Russians have gained full control over the fortified positions and trenches east of Verkhnikamyanske and have reached the outskirts of the town. And in the north, the Russians have also managed to gain full control over the quarry south of Bilorivka. So with this, we see that the entirety east of the Siversk front, which had been stable for many for over a year really, is now moving in the Russian favor as they have managed to capture important fortified positions of the Ukrainians in the section of the front line. Further north here in the direction of the Serbets river line south of Solnihivka, the Russians have managed to capture Andrivka and Miesoharivka, where they have managed to gain control over the eastern bank of the Serbets river in these two villages. They will likely also gain control over this area as it is largely just a gray zone. The Russians have simply not moved in to take control of it. And to the north, they will likely push towards the Mahivka. And at the same time, we also see the Russians gaining control over the western parts of Novoselivsky. The Ukrainian positions are located on the outskirts of the village. However, the village itself is now entirely in Russian hands. And with this, we see that the securement of Novoselivsky, the southern flank of Selmahivka, will likely point toward a Russian offensive to gain control over Selmahivka, the eastern bank of the Serbets River here to the north, and a push towards Pishane, where we saw positional fighting to the southeast of the village. So we're seeing a fighting along the entirety of the Kobiansk section of the front line. We also saw positional fighting west of Kremina in the direction of Liman, in the civil front, we also see an active fighting as the Russians are pushing in three different directions. West of Bakhmut in the direction of Chesevyar, heavy fighting is taking place in the Donetsk front all the way from Novo Alexandrivka to the north and down to Maximilianivka to the south. 
the entire Donetsk front is active as Russians are pushing across the entirety of that section of the front line. Near Novomikhailivka fighting is also taking place throughout this month. All the way down to the Vemevsky Lech, where fighting here is also taking place in Sarmayovsk and Urashaina. To the south in the Urihiv section of the front line, we also see positional fighting taking place. This shows that the Russians are fighting across the entirety of the front line with heavy fighting taking place and the Russians pushing through the Ukrainian fortified positions. Despite the new aid arriving to help Ukraine hold the front line, they are still being pushed back. In the Kharkiv section, it is largely just positional fighting. The front line has been corrected in the direction of Lyboke. The Russians have full control over the village and still have a foothold in the Dacha area southwest of Lyboke. And the front line is stable and the Ukrainians are unable to regain positions by Lyboke. While in the Vovchensk directions, the Russians have improved their positions and are fighting in the northern bank, attempting to gain full control of it, following the Ukrainian failure to regain positions in the area and push the Russians back. So we're seeing that the Russians have regained the initiative in the north and fighting continues across the entirety of the eastern and southern section of the front line. With this, we see that the Russian offensive continues. However, we're not yet seeing the full power of it. The main phase of the Russian offensive has yet to take place. And therefore, we see that the situation right now is entirely on the Russian field. The next move that they make will determine what exactly happens this summer. And the Ukrainians are right now just barely holding on to slow down the Russian soldiers as much as possible. And to hold the line is the entire objective of the Ukrainians right now, while the Russians are choosing where and how much fighting is taking place to secure the front line and push it across to gain control over the Donetsk region mainly. But it seems that fighting expands to other sections of the front line. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon for additional content. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.